this uh, uh, our new vehicle for uh, informing people about uh, the Negate Club. It's called the Green Flag. We're here on Sunday morning in Killeen. Uh, the senior team are outside doing a little light work. And some of the under 15s, I believe, are all on the pitch as well. Uh, if I'd say welcome to you. Um, hopefully, this will be a regular occurrence. Um, I have with me Aidan and Janice as guests. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. Okay, um, so now we we'll cut to some results. Hello and welcome back again to the Green Flag. Uh, I will my guests here, Eden Carmody. Hello Eden, how are you? How are you doing? And I think a lot of people in the club would like to know what happened in the All Ireland semi final when we played Steve's Town. Well I suppose we look at looking back at it now and high inside Steve's Town. We're well prepared. They knew that they came down to do a job and they were ready for us. We didn't perform on the day and a lot of our players up, up to their standard, their normal standard, but that's football. That's what is over and done now and still sound that when y'all are quite well. But look, I think if today was yesterday and if we did game again, I think we'd beat him, but that's water under the bridge. Yeah, there were tough conditions on the day, weren't they? They were very, very, very hard conditions. Yeah. The wind and then we went in with a few injuries as well and yeah. it's one of those days and look, the draft did make this year for this year's championship and every team I'm sure wins the level the draft has made. I'm going to to win it in Kerry this year. There's plans we made already and I think we've had a fantastic year so far this year. Yeah. Last year, like to win Kerry, the intermediate and go on to win Munster is a dream come true really. So I think an interceding championship this year is a big yeah, yeah. People talk about experience and experience of doing things and taking parts in competitions and definitely the experience of travelling up there because it was an unusual place to play football, wasn't it? Without a doubt. I think for all of us, even we all in the article to hold set up there of the Centre of Excellence in Connacht and we won't expect it as a mind to, and a lot of our players like we've a very young team. Like we've like I think the eldest of our team, the job you know, 19, 20, 21. And that's very, very young for the Ireland semi final. And a lot of them didn't have the experience of minors now which are the seventeens, they're very young, they're not even minors at eighteen. So look, just a learning a learning curve and I'm sure they'll learn an awful lot about maybe the better place going forward. Thanks Stephen, thanks very much. And now we'll just cut to the lateral results. Thank you. Hello and welcome back again to the Green Flag and we're going to run on to the next time on our agenda. Uh, hello Janice, how are you? Janice, Hi Janice, you. how are you doing? And uh, Janice, how was last year for uh, ladies football in the club? Um, last year Janice was um, a different year of football for the, for the ladies. Um, we, we, the, the players would have worked hard in their fitness uh, throughout lockdown and that paid dividends when we came onto the pitch. Um, it, it, around April, May time of last year, so they they did well in the in the county league. They played um, Castle and Desmond, who so they they had a good win over them, and then they went on and we we, we had good wins again over from New St Simmons, and of course our rivals us and Sex. We then went on to play in championship, um, senior championship after that, um, and unfortunately we were beaten by um, Valencia in uh, Southern Gales below in Valencia um, in the semi-final who went on to be the overall winners um, of the senior championship last year. Um, so then um, we were we had a good season but we're building, we're still building for senior championship but we get there. Yeah man in building Janice I, I, I came down to a lot of games actually last year most of them because of Covid you couldn't really go anywhere so I came down to an awful lot of the underage games last mm -hmm. year. Now it's still uh, the even number with the girls side of things, it's under 12, 14, 16. It's still an even number, number, yeah, but yeah. then it's but our numbers so for cracking, the championships. Yeah, so yeah. cracking games here last year at the age show. Like, uh, you must be delighted with uh, underage, but uh, the, the, young, uh, the younger age was more. Underage, the numbers are getting very high, really, as we started with the underage teams um, and building their way up. So they progress up to the, the, the difficulty then is that you lose players in around the 14, 16 age group. Um, but then sometimes they come back, um, but that's the difficulty with the ladies football is that you lose those players. But then the, some of the players would look at our county, the county players and the county success they have, and that's actually getting better. So last year we had Priya Dunham in the 14, and she's joined this year by Ian Broderick. And then we had, um, in under 16 this year, Sarah Barrett um, is on that squad, and her sister last year. Um, um, or Aoife Barrett's number 16, sorry Dennis, and Sarah Barrett's number 18, 
in senior champion senior we have Mary O'Connell um, this year and last year and she's starting midfield this year so and Megan O'Connor would have played last year. So it's interesting for the game that three of the players, three of the, the midfielders from the men's and the women's come from the game. So that's an interesting one. Cool. You make me feel old as well, Janice, because I trained them all as well. Yeah. Yeah. I did. And anyway, we, we, we had let the morning go by without speaking about our um, esteemed new vice chairperson of the LGFA, Kerry. Oh, of course. Uh, Not forgetting uh, that, yeah. yeah. Ex Kerry uh, senior manager as well. How's he getting on? Is he. Is he he tells us he's quiet. He's got a few meetings and tells us he's very quiet. He's taking it all in at home. They don't believe for a minute. But uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're delighted for Eddie. Eddie deserves that. So he, does, uh, he works very hard at club level, uh, not caring about them. He's been involved in the county board for, for, for many years as delegate. So yeah, we're very proud of Eddie. So, uh, he works very hard. He does work very hard. We're here on Sunday morning. We're here the morning after the momentous, quite momentous vote. Uh, on the evaluation of the two bodies. Um, that's positive, do you think, us? It's positive from the GA perspective, yeah. So there was 89% carry the motion yesterday at GA Congress now that needs to go through um, the other associations later before it's passed. But yeah, it's a positive move really for, for football overall. Yeah. Yeah. And Aidan, if, so if you don't mind, just ask you as a man whose two daughters played with the club. You have lots of years until someone's playing with the club as well. What do you think? Well, I think it's well, well too. I think, in fairness, Malay have been very good to embrace women, and we they're just up at dressing rooms and all that. But in other clubs, they they seem to have problems. So under one organisation, I think they'd be very positive going forward. I think in rural land, and especially now, where they're struggling for numbers and struggling for mentors and all. If we one organisation, we'd be making it a lot easier. Everybody's at the same team, and everybody would be pulling together. So one forward, it can be only a help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the journalists, you, 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 like, I, I can see it in myself as well. They're like it's, it's an equilibrium, really, like the, the boys and the girls side of things are all treated with equal within the club. Yeah, but once we're, like, we're not one club as such, so we're two separate clubs still. But yes, I suppose everybody's working for the same goal at the end of the day. So yeah, we are unique, really, in Kerry, as far as I know, that uh, we're the only club that have their own dressing rooms. Um, we have good access to the pitch because it's a good pitch um, committee here in the game um, and it works well. So from a home perspective we wouldn't have any issues really. Uh, you may have to change games here and there when you're going away to be able to accommodate championship and league games, but other than that, no worries. Yeah, very good, very good. Thanks very much, Janice. Thanks, Aidan. And now we'll cross to Club Heroes. Thank you very much. Good morning. Morning, lads. Now tell us your name. Tim Lynch. And where are you from, Tim? Originally from Meadowlands, which is only about 500 yards that way, and now living 500 yards that way. Very good then. What's your occupation, Tim? Uh, chairman of Nagail and part-time dentist. And what would your history of the club be? Well, my history is, it, is very simple, really. My father was one of the founding members, so I've been here since 1978 and still here. Excellent. And what's your current occupation of the club? I'm chairman. Chairman of the club and uh, General Dog's body. Excellent, excellent. So, how would you like to see for the future? Uh, I'd like just to consolidate what we have really. We're intermediate champions now. We'd like to be senior champions at some stage, like to increase the participation of boys and girls at all ages and maybe consistently play in Division 1 in the future. Okay, yeah. thanks, Tim. Thank you very much. Good evening. Now, tell us your name Tony Blake. And where are you from, Tony? Originally born in Boston, Massachusetts, in America, and I'm really from Lixnar as such. I'm proud of my of my village. And what's your occupation? Security officer. And what's your history with Nagail? Nagail, I've been involved with Nagail for ooh, twenty or thirty years. Played football for Nagail as as a young fella. I will say I was a young fella, anyway. and. Felt in when they were badly stuck. And who was coaching at that time? Pat Joyce. And where would you have been playing? Uh, up in Old Park. Old Park was do our practice up in Old Park because the clubhouse wasn't here at that stage. We have a fine clubhouse here now. Hi, and what would you like to see for the future? Oh, to excel, win an intermediate title and go on and win the All Ireland at senior level. To be great, to be great for the club and all the people that have put all their time and effort in here. Thank you. 
No bother, boy. Now, good morning. What's your name? Uh, I'm Eddie Sheehy. And where are you from, Eddie? I'm from a small town and called Bukhan, out near Larkin Pond. Very I'm, good. And I'm living in, 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 in Tree. I'm living in Tree. And what's your occupation? I'm a welder fabricator. And what's your history with Nguyen? I took his name for Boyle when he since 2003. So, and I'm currently chairperson of the ladies' board in here and uh, I coach a few teams. And what's your future ambitions for the, the club? The well, future ambitions for the club is for our girls, to, for our senior team to be uh, all our champions at senior level and for all our younger girls to play through and play in our senior team. Today. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. And uh, speaking of club heroes, um, to be a hero you have to get involved in the club really. Um, and it would be great to see more people get involved in the club. And uh, speaking of that, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, delighted to have you back here. We'll be back here again in a, a, a week's time. Uh, and um, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Bye.